Sea level, early afternoon. An otherwise clear day is obfuscated by a billowing cloud of smoke that hangs over the waves. A smaller merchant clipper ship lists in the water slightly. The foremast toppled across the bow of the ship, charred sails all but useless as the dark wood brig closes the last bit of distance to the floundering vessel. In the midst of the chaos and screaming on deck, the sound of quieted expletives go largely unnoticed from the crow's nest 20 meters above. Six, seven, shit, shit. Guy throws his normally bountiful quiver, now with paltry few arrows remaining in it, against the wooden planks below, and turns to the approaching brig. Shit luck. Five years of shit luck that was missed come to find Guy and bend him over like a bow overdrawn. And now... There is nothing to do but wait for the- Guy grips the side of the nest with white knuckles and peers down to the deck just in time to see the cannonball crack into the stern of the ship, taking most of the wheel with it. He sees a Tusa, half-dwarven commander, down below. Barely phased by the blast, she is barking orders at hapless merchants with white faces as she shoves weapons into their trembling hands. The fodder wouldn't survive the shock of the gangplanks, let alone what came after. Guy rests his back against the mast, sliding down to a seated position and stares at his hands. They are shaking again. He balls them into fists and opens them slowly several times, and then reaches for the bottle next to him. He takes a swig and lets the sweet sharpness of the rum inside coat his mouth for a moment before letting it slide past, savoring the burn for a second longer than he normally would. Fuck it. Not going out sober, he upends the bottle and lets the rest of it swirl down quickly, igniting his insides like fire stoked by a bellows. Now then, he stands, knocking an arrow and palming two more against the grip of his bow. Time to make our own luck. Holding out a blade to a particularly foppish and nervous man, Atusa yells over the commotion, gesturing wildly to the open ocean. We're probably dying today, so you get to pick between jumping into the water in an active combat zone or picking this up and stabbing the man who's coming to stab you. The man looks between her and the open ocean for just a second before taking off at a sprint and leaping off the ship. Bastard coward! Atusa shouts after him before moving on, muttering something about his testicles rotting. Two arms, pointy and facing out. Don't give them an inch without a fight. Looking up, she spots Guy finishing the bottle of rum off in the crow's nest. I think that was mine. With a sound like a heavy sigh, the last of the sail sloughs off the mast, burned to a crisp. Atusa looks at another man crouched between two crates, trembling and holding a too large helmet on his head. She leans against the crates almost casually. You know, I always thought I'd die on land. No response comes. None from the man hiding. None from the rallied crew or the overboard man whose name she knew was important once. And, oddly, none from the attacking ship. Until, with a hard slap, the sound of boots hitting the deck breaks the silence as the first pirate lands aboard.